Good morning. This is Dave again, Bowling Green Presbyterian Church for Morning Devotion. Today we're going to talk about Jesus. Well, we're going to get started first with the lighter side. Before he died, Billy Graham was returning to Charlotte after a speaking engagement, and when his plane arrived, there was a limousine waiting to transport him home. As he prepared to get into the limo, he stopped and spoke to the driver. You know, he said, I'm 87 years old, and I have never driven a limousine. Would you mind if I drove it for a while? The driver said, no problem. Be my guest. Billy got into the front seat, and the driver got in the back. Billy, uh, they, off, they head off down the highway. A short distance away, said a rookie state tro uh, trooper operating his first speed trap. The long black lim uh, limo went by doing 70 in a 55 speed zone. The young trooper uh, stopped the car and walked up to the driver's door. When the glass was rolled down, he was surprised to see who was driving. He immediately excused himself and went back to his car and called his supervisor. He told his supervisor, I know we're supposed to enforce the law, but I also know that, that important people are given certain courtesies. I need to know what I should do because I have stopped a very important person. The supervisor asked, is it the governor? The young trooper said, no, he's more important than that. The supervisor said, oh, so it's the president. The young trooper said, no, it's more important than that. Uh, so the supervisor said, oh, it's the president. The young trooper said, no, he's even more important than that. The supervisor finally asked, well, then just who is it? The young trooper said, I think it's Jesus because he's got Billy Graham for a chauffeur. So today, should Jesus come back, we'll be ready for him. All right. The greatest man in history is Jesus. He had no servants, yet they called him master. He had no degree, yet they called him teacher. He had no medicines, yet they called him healer. He had no army, yet kings feared him. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. When Jesus says, come to me, he doesn't say come to religion, come to a system, or come to a certain doctrine. This is a very personal invitation to a God an invitation to a savior. In essence, Christianity is nothing more, nothing less than a desire and an effort to see Jesus. That's all it is. We're trying to catch a glimpse of a man, not a program, not a plan, not a system, not a doctrine. We're trying to see a man who called himself the son of God. Our God is not a law. He's not so far above us that he can't see and understand our problems. Jesus isn't a God who stayed on a mountaintop. He's a Savior who came down and lived and worked with people. Everywhere he went, the crowds followed, drawn together by the magnet that was and is the Savior. The life of Jesus is a message of hope, a message of mercy, and a message of life in the dark. And our scripture today is coming from Matthew 27, 45 through 54. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the people standing and heard him said, He's calling to Elijah. One of them ran up and at once and took a sponge and soaked it in cheap wine and put it to the end of a stick and tried to make him drink it. But the other said, Wait. Let's see if Elijah is coming to save him. Jesus again gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. The rocks split apart. The graves broke open and many of God's people who had died were raised to life. They left the graves and after Jesus rose from the dead, they went into the holy city where many people saw them. 
when the army officer and the soldiers with him who were watching Jesus saw the earthquakes and everything else that happened, they were terrified and said, he really was the son of God. Jesus, this was a person who had a most unusual conception and birth of anyone in history. A young man who at 12 years old stood up in the Son of God and read the scriptures and taught better than the pros. And at 16, he went to a wedding with his mother and performed his first miracle, turning water into the finest wine they had ever tasted. When his ministry started, he selected 12 men to assist him, his disciples. These were some of the most unusual people he could have selected. They ranged from fishermen to a tax collector and from the most revered really to the most unliked. He performed many, many miracles, casting out demons, raising the dead, letting the blind see, the crippled walk, the deaf talk, and here, and calming the rough seas, walking on water. Even uh, the night he was arrested, he put the ear back on a Roman soldier. Who else could have done that? This man called Jesus was sent by his father, God himself, on a mission. And in John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But that was the mission he was on. And it's put in from uh, 3.17 that he was here to save the world, not condemn it. And he did a great job on it. He did that for us. He did it out of love. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to this earth to save each and every one of us. He loved us all. He loved everything and everyone, and he showed it during his years here on earth. And help us to show it to others as we go through this day and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.